do you got for me? Who is your favorite movie director and what made you decide on that? Is there like a story or a specific film that made you choose them as your favorite? Martin Scorsese, I would say him for sure, which I mean, a lot of people would agree with me. I'm sure he's the great, to me, he's the greatest living director. Goodfellas was the reason I bought a, a video camera when I was a kid. I wanted to be a filmmaker because of him. What about, what about you? Who's your favorite director and why? My favorite director is Alfred Hitchcock. I got into him because when Disturbia came out, my dad was like, hey, this is a remake. We should watch the original. So we went to the movie store, which those don't exist anymore. We watched Rear Window. I was just like captivated by it and all like the twists. And Did you see, you you saw Suspiria though? Or not Suspiria. What's the... Sub, sub, what? Suburbia. Suburbia. Yeah. You saw that? I saw it after we saw Rear Window. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because it was, like, getting promoted. But aren't they pretty different overall? Like, I mean, yeah, they're both the yeah, base concept I mean, of a guy is spying on his neighbor. Yeah. But instead of, like, him having broken legs and he can't move, yeah, he's, he's, like, on house, on house arrest. arrest. Yeah. yeah. He's, and he's Shia LaBeouf. I haven't watched a lot of Hitchcock, actually. I've, I've seen The Biggins, Psycho. Rear Window, Vertigo. I know that he's well regarded, but I've never really gotten into him. I need to like. Yeah, I I feel like if he was around now, he'd probably get canceled. Why? I don't know, because he was like super jokey and stuff on the on the set. But it's like, well, how do you feel about Scorsese? I like him. I I've, I haven't seen every movie of his, mm. but all the ones I have seen, I thought were really well done. Dude, Goodfellas just gives you uh, just a rock hard fist the entire movie. Someone my dad worked with, like her cousin's Ray Liotta or something. What? <laughs> yeah. Ray Liotta's ra- related to someone from around here? Yeah. What's your favorite Hitchcock movie? Dial M from Murder was the one that I like went out of my way to watch by myself because like I didn't know what IMDb was back then, yeah. but I saw it was like on the top 250. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, it's on Turner Classic Movies. When I first found IMDb, I just started going through. I like, I felt like I memorized the top 250. Yeah. Like I was like, I, I want to see all of these. Like, why is City of God so highly rated? And then I saw it and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. And like, but then there's other movies you watch and you're like, why is this even, why does this even have anything higher than a six? Like there's some like low rated movies that right. I would give like nines, but it has like a five and a half. Like but... the first Captain America. It's a good movie. The first it. Captain America is underrated, I think. Like it's often considered one of the be- one of the worst Marvel movies, but maybe it's cuz I have the exact same body type as Chris Evans before he turns into Captain America. <laughs> I could be a body double for a lot of starving people. Like when The Machinist came out. <laughs> I was just like, going to say that. They were like Christian Bale got down to like 120 pounds. It's like that's my life. <laughs> That's where I've been at. I've weighed the same since I was like 12. Dial in for murder. What's it about? So this guy hires someone to kill his wife, like planning the perfect murder, but not everything goes as planned. And Yeah, you don't want to spoil it. You don't want to spoil a movie that's 65 years yeah, old. Yeah, and then it was remade. Did you know in The Sixth Sense, Bruce Willis is dead the entire time? Remember when M. Night Shyamalan was going to be like a good movie director and then it just didn't happen? <laughs> it's just stupid that like... His first big movie had a twist ending. And then he tries to up it every time. That became his career. Yeah. I'm twist ending guy. And it's like, well, like David Fincher has made movies with twist endings, but he's like every movie of his isn't like a twist ending with some stupid. He also like stole uh, Hitchcock's thing where he's like, I'm going to appear in my movies. Is he in all of his movies? Uh, Hitchcock isn't in every single well, no, one. I mean, but M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, he like appears in... Every one of them? I don't think every one of them, but I think he appears in a few of them. Oh. And it's like, so instead of getting a C-list actor, you're going to use yourself. Other directors have done that. Like Peter Jackson shows up in Lord of the Rings. He also plays Santa in Hot Fuzz. Is he good friends with like Edgar Wright? Or Edgar Wright is just, he's got some some good numbers on speed dial. I thought Baby Driver was super good. Like how everything was tuned to like the music. Having his, his gunman shooting to the beat of the music and it's a non-diegetic music that's so good in the like one tracking shot when he's like going to get coffee or whatever like there's like graffiti in the background that are spray painting the word lyrics and stuff and like of a new of a new generation of directors who's your favorite i'd say christopher nolan 
I like a lot of his movies. He's not. So. He's not. I mean, obviously, he's he's a very culturally popular, important director, especially currently. But uh, to me, he's a little overrated. Who do you like? Denis Villeneuve. Everything he's been making lately has been so fantastic. Uh, David Fincher. There's an argument no, that his his filmography is fantastic. Yeah, you think of Nolan. A lot of people never will mention people who direct superhero movies as like some of the greats of all time. And that's what's funny is like people who have made movies that make a fuckload of money, like the Russo brothers making Avengers. Right. They're never they're not in the conversation of greatest but like, directors of like all time. Christopher but it's Nolan like, made the original the Dark Knight. He's the only one where yeah, yeah. he like supersedes it. I wonder if it's because he did like Memento and stuff before that yeah. and like gave himself like that wasn't his calling to fame. Yeah. You know who had a good filmography going, but I don't. I think is psh, now is Darren Aronofsky. Oh yeah, it's he's just a, now it's just pretentious as shit to me. Up like, to like the Wrestler was super good. Wrestler was great. Black Swan, um, Requiem for a Dream. Pie is good. The it's Fountain. messed up. <laughs> but like now he's just like everything he makes is like this is so important. I was trying to think of like overrated like overrated directors. Um, Jordan Peele. I mean, yeah, he's only done two movies. Yeah, but they both were, like, overrated. <laughs> What's his name? Roger Edgers? Eggers? I think yeah, Roger Eggers. Who did The Witch and Lighthouse. Like, his first two movies are probably better. See, I hated The Witch, better. and I liked Get Out, but, like, I haven't seen The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is unbelievable. Because The Witch is, like, a lot of metaphorical stuff and about, like, femininity and, like, growing into a woman. And then the lighthouse is just big, hard, masculine dicks. Another one, um, Ari Aster, Hereditary, and you would and uh, Midsummer. You would think that dude's been making movies for thirty oh, years. But both those were like super good. They're right? amazing, and he already has such a voice in directing. And then Jordan Peele, I don't know, like Get Out didn't seem that like out there and new. Huge twist ending, like. And I'm, I don't mean to just talk trash on it because it, it, it is a good movie. And Jordan Peele, I think, is a talented man. Like everyone says, like, Kubrick's probably the greatest ever. And it's like, yeah, There's an argument like, to be made for that. Yeah. Like he did have a good filmography, but. His filmography is pretty fucking solid. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, this has been on the table. <laughs>